Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Lars Schall and I welcome you to a special interview that I conduct on behalf of Matthorn Asset Management in Zurich, Switzerland, with the author of this book, Dimitri Speck. Dimitri, referring to the title of your book, what is the Gold Cartel? The Gold Cartel is um, a coordinated um, effort to suppress the gold price. Um, the gold price is being suppressed since August 93, originally by central banks, and, uh, but the central banks mostly disappeared. Now it's mainly uh, the Treasury, the US Treasury, coordin in coordination with so-called bullion bank, that means private banks who are doing the daily business to suppress the price of gold. Are there different phases of the price suppression of gold? Yeah, you are picking up a very important uh, topic. In 1993 until 1996, it was uh, done by central banks to keep the price of gold below 400. That was the main goal. And there were different means to reach this goal. And one mean at that time was to lease gold from central banks to bullion banks. And so the, the gold uh, appeared in the market, uh, which has the same effect as um, selling uh, gold. Through that, the, the bullion banks who, were, uh, who lent this gold um, had an, their own interest uh, that the gold price uh, will drop more because uh, then they have a good earning from, uh, from the falling price. And so from 1996 until 2001, we had the second phase in which uh, the, the, the interest was mainly from the bullion banks to earn more money through a falling gold price than from the central banks. And in May 2001, uh, the third period started, which is until now, if we don't have the fourth period yet, this will be, cannot be judged still. And this is the period where uh, Greenspan um, decided uh, that he cannot keep the price at this low level anymore, but uh, it's only possible to, to control the rise of price, that it does not rise too fast, or that in crisis situation like 2008 or 2011, the euro crisis, the price would not explode. That was uh, the new goal. And since then, uh, Greenspan told to the bullion banks they should uh, take care because the price of gold will rise. And since then, uh, the, the main efforts is through the COMEX, through sh sudden shocks, which appear often more than once a day, to, to press the price of gold down. Yeah. Are there um, specific times when those price shocks occur? Um, statistically, it can be observed uh, that, like in the LIBOR scandal, uh, the fixing, in this case the PM fixing and also the AM fixing, or in silver the fixing, uh, is, is a main goal. Uh, and you can st statistically prove that at this time the price does drop. There were also in the past other times, like the closing price in New York of the COMEX, but this has disappeared mainly because uh, the COMEX has now uh, Globex, that means gold is also being traded in the night. And so uh, it happens also quite often that these sh sudden shocks, price shocks, waterfalls appear um, in very illiquid markets like uh, on Monday morning in Australia when it just opened or in other times. So this has changed a little bit in, in recent time, but you can still prove over time that at the PM fixing mainly the price drops significantly. Can you tell us a little bit about the method, the statistical method that you have used to prove the suppression of the gold price? Uh, there are several methods how you can prove uh, Anomalies, statistically, one was in the very beginning. This was introduced by Clavant in 2001, and I have extended this research that uh, the price does drop usually during uh, New York trading times compared to uh, the re rest of the world. This was one approach, but this has changed a little bit. Then we have this intraday anomalies, for instance, that during fixing or other periods there are sudden shocks. Another statistics, for instance, is to count these shocks. If you have good intraday data, you can count how often they appear. And for instance, in 2008, we have very much more sudden shocks 
price drops which occur in a few minutes than in, in other period and in other markets. These are statistical proofs. But you can extend it also in, in, in other fields. For instance, uh, GATA, which is an organization um, who, who does uh, publish a lot of stuff uh, about this gold suppression since years, has observed that in, I think, 1997 until 2000 or so, the closing price of gold each year was almost the same. Yeah, and uh, this was especially at the comics, the front contract, the difference between in those three or four years was less than one dollar. And here you can make simply a statistic, how, how can it be coincidence? Yeah, and the chance is very, very low, mm. and so forth. There are many statistics, or one more statistic is, you can simply look um, at the price uh, level uh, over the decades since 1968. This is some statistic which I have also done in the book. And you can make how often uh, does the price stay below uh, um, a psychological important decimal round number like 200, 300, 400, 500. And there you can see the period from August 93 until ni November 96, this first period with 400 that it's really much more below this level. And then you can identify a second period where it is below 300. Statistically, very significant that it is below this round number, but not below other round numbers. Mm -hmm. yeah? And this is a strong hint that the agreement uh, of between the central banks was not to allow gold to stay above 400. This is simply how you can start an agreement if you want to manipulate a price and you are making it coordinated, you simply have this agreement. Mm -hmm. How effective are those interventions? They are quite effective, yeah. Um, the, the central banks were the most uh, important influence on the gold price from 1993 until um, recently, yeah. This can be uh, seen easily if you look um, at, at what the central banks are how much gold the central banks are bringing to the market. Yeah? Uh, the central banks bring gold to the market through selling and through lending. Yeah? And uh, starting in 1993 until 2001, the central banks brought a lot of gold to the market through selling and lending. And in 2001, they stopped this additional lending and even reduced it. This mean they continued selling gold, yeah, but on the same side, they reduced their lending, their, their amount of lending. And since then, the, the gold price is rising. So you can s clearly say that in the last two decades, the central banks were the core reason of how gold does behave. First, this 400 border, then this dropping to 2050, with, which was also caused by bullion banks, but with support of the central banks and then the rising s since 2001 because the central banks did not want to lose all their gold. Mm -hmm. yeah? So they are really the main influence uh, on, on the gold price. The only thing is m many people consider only the gold sales of the central banks, but you must also look on the gold lending. Yeah? And if you add these two figures, how much lending, gold comes through lending, and how much gold comes through sales of central banks to the market, you see clearly that these figures did rise significantly from 93 to 2001. So a lot of gold came through central banks to the market. And since 2001, despite there was still a lot of gold sales between 2001 and 2008 about, uh, uh, there did not come a lot of gold to the market because they reduced their lending. Mm -hmm. yeah? So this is clearly a core influence uh, fundamentally on the gold price, but there is also this other topic, this price shocks, which have also influence. But the main question I think has to be, what is the motivation to do it in the first place? Um, the central banks have different reasons why to um, influence the gold price. The central banks and the US government, we must distinguish a little bit between those two. Um, let's begin also here historically. In 1993, what was the original reason to start with the gold suppression scheme? And uh, I think it can be best explained by a quote from Greenspan, 
who at an FOMC meeting talked about um, uh, a situation with what he has talked with a colleague. And uh, this talk was about the idea to sell some gold, yeah, because gold, as Greenspan said, the Fed chef Greenspan, is a thermometer. Yeah? At that time, gold did rise from about 250 to 400, and the thermometer gold indicated that maybe there's a danger of inflation. Yeah? And Greenspan said if gold would explode, put it in this word, he used another word, uh, gold would not only be a thermometer, but it would also change the, psych the psychological situation of the market participants. Meaning, maybe the savers would ask for higher interest rates or would consume more because they fear inflation, or uh, the people working would ask for how are wa higher wages and so on. Yeah? So his idea was uh, to keep the price of gold through selling gold at that time, uh, to reduce the inflation expectations. Mm -hmm. And this is the original main motivation of the Federal Reserve System Bank uh, to suppress the price of gold. Yeah? Yeah. Because they feared inflation, yeah? at the same time the economy was weak, yeah? so they had the choice um, either to increase uh, the, the interest rates yeah? or which would hurt the economy even more, or, and this was Greenspan's idea, to suppress the price of gold, to lower the inflation expectation, and to change the behavior of the people. Yeah, this was the original motivation, and this was also uh, in combination with the second motivation uh, to lower uh, the long-term yields for bonds, yeah, because you can always see, and that was known at that time, that if gold does not rise, the competitor gold uh, compared to bonds would support the bond prices. Yeah? So uh, these were the, the core motivations. But there are other motivations too. One is a strong dollar, yeah? because the US is a running deficit since the 60s. And since then, by the way, uh, the US is interested uh, that, that uh, the investment go in from other central banks, but also from foreign people, uh, go, go to US treasuries and not to gold. Yeah? So the strong dollar policy is very strong connected with the suppression of the gold price. And nowadays, much more important, of course, is, is uh, the topic with the crisis, uh, like the financial crisis in 2008, or um, the euro crisis, or Cyprus, the April crash of gold. Yeah. Yeah? If, if the savers of money uh, fear about their savings, yeah, they would go normally, of course, also into gold. And it, if at the same time gold drops, they say, OK, gold is also not safe. Yeah. And maybe they stay in their accounts, in their banking accounts with their money. Would you say then that the price management of gold is rather a psychological uh, operation? Um, the, the suppressing of gold has the, the goal, of course, to change the be behavior of, of investors. Investors, private investors, institutional investors, but also other central banks. Yeah? This is, of course, the, 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 the core reason why um, mainly nowadays uh, the U.S. Treasury is, is doing it. Do you perceive the price suppression of gold as a um, buy opportunity? Um, we must distinguish here a little bit between medium term and long term uh, thoughts. Yeah, let um, us concentrate on long term, please. Uh, long term, it's it's clear you simply get it cheaper. Yeah, so it's a good buying opportunity for gold. Yeah, um, because the core reason uh, why gold uh, should rise is our financial system, our financial stability. If you look at the indebtedness of the entire world, it's now more than double the level than in the 60s. Uh, every debt is also a saving of somebody else, a claim. Yeah? And um, that means our system is, is not really stable. And gold is a direct competitor here. And in my opinion, uh, this situation will turn out in a way that the saver will lose in real terms 
yeah, but the gold owner will earn in real terms. And this means, of course, if you get gold cheaper, that in the long run you will benefit. If mm. you okay, thank you very much for the first part. Ladies and gentlemen, you saw the first interview that I conducted with Dimitri Speck. And on behalf of Matawan Asset Management, I say thank you for watching.